family movie about a guy who loves his dad and hates his dad. It's, well, it's just great. It's very imagined, very different. It opens uh, Christmas Day, although it's, it's already playing in L.A. and New York, but it opens wide Christmas Day. Please welcome Ewan McGregor. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you again, Lonnie. Nice to be back. Well, welcome back. You know, You've got a new suite. Oh, you like the suite? That's yes, very nice. Oh, that's very good. good you can eye. dry your car with it once you finish the film. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's correct. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. A friend of yours, Jude Law, was here about a week ago, and he said you guys were roommates. Now, you seem very different. You seem more like, it seems like a, you seem more like the street lad, and he seems more like he's sort of... <laughs> yes. Well, it was a killer combination. There yes. was Jude, uh, Johnny Lee Miller, and myself shared okay. a flat in a in uh, Hampstead in North London. Okay. And it was, um, it was only for six months. I'd been living w w by myself for a while and I can't remember why we all ended up together. We were old mates and we, had a, we were starting a production company together and stuff. And we had this, cr this uh, apartment together, yeah. Now, is this the one that was haunted? No. <laughs> all right, no, now what's the haunted There's part? another one. Oh, God. I, <laughs> was I it? was set on fire by a, by a ghost. When I was on my... Ah, you laugh. You laugh, but you wouldn't have laughed if it had happened to you. No, I was t I was twenty. It was my 20th birthday, and I, I lived in this... Uh, I was in my second year at drama school, and I lived in this uh, house in East London. There was, like, three floors in it, and then this one room at the top of some stairs. Yeah. That was my room. And it was my room and a bathroom, and then this huge, dark stairwell uh, with no light coming into it. And I woke up and it was uh, Easter and everyone was away and I was alone in this big house and I, 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 I'd watched a movie in my bed because it was my birthday, right? And then, um, <laughs> and then I, I, I ran a bath and I went for a wee walk around everyone else's room because they weren't there. Yeah. So I was just having a nosy about, really. And, uh, and I came back upstairs. I was leaning against the door of the bathroom and I had this terrible pain in my shoulder and I whipped off my dressing gown and there was a burn mark, like this big, on the back of my shoulder. And then I looked closely, and the whole back of the dressing gown was lightly scorched. And uh, I freaked out, and um, I thought that maybe I'd caught fire in someone's room or something. So I ran around all the house. There was nothing anywhere. So then I, um, I went away for the night, spent my birthday night with my uncle, came back the next day, and I told my flatmate, who'd returned, about this, this happening, this burning on my back. And he went white. And I said, uh, he wouldn't tell me what was, he wouldn't tell me what the, what, what the matter was. Anyway, eventually I got out of him that the guy who owned his flat, which was downstairs, was this old reclusive man, Mr. Goldblum, and his brother would come and feed him t three times a week or something, because he didn't cook himself. Anyway, his brother, right, <laughs> this is quite involved, <laughs> stay with me. His brother, yeah. right, his brother hadn't come one of these days, and Mr. Goldblum was boiling the kettle, and he passed out, because uh, through hunger and fatigue, he, he collapsed, and his kettle set fire to the towel, set fire to the, his back, and killed him dead, like that. Ooh. Now, it was Jewish Passover, uh, when all the spirits go over the houses and stuff, and uh, that was the day I got burnt on my back. So, I freaked out, we went to the, to the local alehouse to try and calm ourselves down. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, That's what you would do, as you would. And when we got back, um, he was trying to make light, my friend Jeremy was trying to make light of the situation, and he said, look, there's as much dust in here, it was dusty, our flat, there's as much dust in here as when Mr. Goldblum used to live here. And at that moment, the whole ceiling in the living room fell to the ground, like that. Boom! And I heard this noise, and, oh, no! And it was me going, ah! <laughs> and, uh, and the whole apartment was covered in an inch and a half of dust. You see? <laughs> And I left shortly after that, two weeks well, later. Well, yeah, 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 I was going to say, yeah, that was... Well, that's a frightening, that's a frightening story. Terrifying. Oh, good heavens. That is a frightening story. That's, that's a, a very frightening story, story everybody. <laughs> now, I want to ask you about something else. I know you, this picture you did called Young Adam, it's not out yet. But, but you got... Have people seen it? Well, you got censored here. She's I, seen it over there. I know in the, 
in the European version, or the yeah. English version, you got this full frontal nudity, but here they... they, yeah. they what there might be. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's a yeah. good story if, it's, if they do, but right. very often they don't allow you in this country to see a penis in a movie. You are allowed to see people decapitated and, right. and their guts pulled out and blown up and sawn right. in half with a machine gun, but you can't see an old man <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which is a shame. Of course, you know, when, when you use the medical terms, it makes it hard yeah, yeah. to follow, you know. Yeah, 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 of course. So you have to go to Europe. <laughs> and in fact, you should go to Britain. All right, so if I wanted to see your penis, where would I have to go? <laughs> so I can't see it here. I would have to go to Britain or Scotland. Well, I'd show it to you back No, there. I don't want to. Stop. <laughs> How do you think you got on here? Hey, you guys are over. Hey, you guys are over. Hey, we'll be right back. Boom, boom, boom. You'd have to go to Britain, yeah. Does it seem more puritanical to you as an actor when you come here to America? Like when those type of things you say? Well, no, because I don't, I don't really understand. It doesn't seem to match up because cause, um, you, cause you're a very sexy nation, I think. I don't yeah. think you, you're as repressed as the censors are. So yeah, maybe yeah. it's just... People who want to become a censor aren't all that hot in the yeah. sack. <laughs> however, however, everyone else in America is pretty yeah. good in the sack, I've heard. Right. All right, look, look, we'll take a little break. I want to ask you about this around the world trip. Yeah. So you're right. Well, with you and McGregor right after. <laughs> Talking with you and McGregor, Big Fish is the uh, is the picture. Hey, I want to ask you about this. So, what's this world bike tour? Now, Jude Law was here, and you said you're going to <clears> bike <throat> around the world. Yeah, it's been a plan of mine for a long time. And my best mate in London, Charlie Berman, uh, and, and we were planning a trip on motorcycles. We, we you know, we do, we've done a lot of biking together, and um, we were looking for a tour to do, um, maybe with our wives originally, and uh, <laughs> you know, maybe to Spain or. But it all, it all seemed a bit pedestrian to me, you know. And um, my wife was brought up in China. And I suddenly, I was looking, I got the world map out. And I thought, well, we could go to China. That would be good. And then I thought, well, but my wife by that point was like, uh, she's not sitting on the back of my motorbike to China, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's no way. Yeah. But by that time, me and Charlie were a bit hooked. And we, we just, we, we thought about going to China. And then uh, there would be no point in just turning around and coming back. So... I'd looked at the map, and the Bering Straits are very narrow, that, you know, that separates eastern Russia with America, with Alaska. It's, it didn't seem to be very far. And I thought, there's, look, there's a straight line around the world there. Let's do that. So we, we started planning it, and, and we, we, we start really officially on, uh, in the middle of January with our preparation. And then we leave in sometime in April, and we're going to ride from London to New York, East, going east, going right. the, going the long way the around, long way. Okay. and um, we're going to cross through uh, Europe and Poland and the Ukraine, Russia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, China. Now Mongolia, that seems a little yeah. hairy. Mongolia, when you get to Mongolia, yeah, there's no roads in Mongolia. There's uh, like 80 miles worth of roads scattered around, and the rest is um, off-road stuff. And what you you bring tents? You sleep in a tent? Yeah, we'll be in tents, and I mean we'll, we won't sleep in a tent unless we have to. But I right, think a lot right. of the time we'll have to. You know? All right, okay. Yeah. Now you want to cross the United States as well? Yeah, because we talked about this. We the talked last about time. that. Yeah, yeah. And you, what, you were denied. Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't let you stay at the hotel. I was turned away from the Elk, it was Elk, Elk City Holiday Inn Express, I think. Yeah. Because it was completely empty, and I pulled up on my bike. I told this last time. Yeah. But they, I walked in, you know, and I'd been on the road all day, and right. I, I, I got off a big bike, and they, they just said, we're full, and we don't have a room. Well, you know, and I was riding away, and it was a completely deserted car park. Yeah, they saw this. Oh, they were? And they gave you this. This is a free pass to stay at the <laughs> That's good, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. To stay at the, yeah. at See, the Elk City. Right, but I like it's not redeemable for cash. You have to actually stay. In <laughs> you can't, like, cash that in another holiday. It's yeah. one night, only one night as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just you one can night. do Elk City in a day, though, I believe. Yeah. 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 Well, that's really nice of them. Thank yeah, you. Well, Thank you are. to that's the people good. at Elk uh, Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. Now, tell us about Elk uh, City. Talk about uh, Big Fish. This is Tim Burton movie. Yeah. I, I thought this is a wonderful, charming movie, especially for the holidays. It's a really it's beautiful, feel yeah. good, beautiful movie. Tell people it's what it's really about. It's a really beautiful film. It's a, it's a very simple story about about a father and, and a son, and their relationship has become uh, they've they've been split up through. The father is a great storyteller, and he tells very large stories about his own life and very kind of rosy uh, stories about himself, essentially. But um, 
And, and we see very, at the beginning of the film the son hearing the same stories over and over and over and over again to the point where the son's now grown up and he's getting married and his father's standing up there played by Albert Finney, the brilliant yeah. and beautiful Albert Finney, is telling this story at his son's wedding about himself, about the day his son was born. And, and, and at that point, the son says, that's enough, I've had these stories in my life. And then they don't see each other for three years. Yeah. And the father, he gets a call, the father has become ill, and uh, he goes back to try and, to try and discover who his father is. He doesn't feel like he knows who his father is. It, all he knows about him are these, these huge stories, you know. And, um, and, and the film is really a, 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 about them coming together again. And, and, and I, I'm very fortunate to get to play Albert Finney as a young man. So as he's telling these great, fantastical stories about his own life, I get to, I get to play those. And um, it was a beautiful experience. I love being in Alabama. It was beautiful to work completely down there with an incredible cast. And, and, and Tim, was to working, he's, oh, yeah. he's the best. It's he's a very imaginative. It. It's, it's unbelievable. What is this scene? Oh, this is when you... Yes. So I find, I've, I've worked through the circus and I, I see the girl I'm going to marry at the circus the first day, you know? And I say, I'm going to, I'm going to, and then I lose her, I can't find her. And I say to Danny DeVito, I say, I'm going to find that girl or spend the rest of my life trying to find her and die alone. And he says, well, he tells me he knows who she is, uh, but he'll, if I work for him, he'll tell me one thing about her every month I work for him for free, basically. Yeah, yeah. So eventually he gives and he tells me who she is, and I, I come here to tell her that I, I, I'm going to marry her. But she doesn't know who I am. Let's take and and the, the voiceover might be Albert Finney, or it might be me. We'll see. You don't know me, but my name is Edward Bloom. And I love you. I, I've spent the last three years working to find out who you are. And I've been shot and stabbed and trampled a few times. I broke my ribs twice. But it's all been worth it to see you here now and to finally get to talk to you. Because I'm destined to marry you. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize to me. I'm the luckiest person you're gonna find today. No, I'm sorry. I'm engaged to be married. I I'm sorry to have bothered you. Stop it. It's not funny. There's a time when a man needs to fight and a time when he needs to accept that his destiny is lost, the ship has sailed, and that only a fool will continue. Truth is, I've always been a fool. Sandra Templeman, I love you and I will marry you! Uh, terrific film. Terrific okay. film. You and... Thank you, lad. Come back Thank and see us again much. before you go on the trip. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, when I yeah. get back. Big Fish is a picture. It opens Christmas. Be right back with Nicole Richie.